you decided you want to buy a classic Volkswagen bus, have you decided what year? If you've decided that you'd like to get a 1968 to 1979 VW bus, also known as a bay window bus, then stay tuned and listen up. I would say all buses, but honestly, we don't have as much experience in split window buses as we do bay window buses. I happen to own a 1966 split window bus. I've owned a few in my lifetime, but I've owned hundreds of bay window buses. Uh, we build them. Uh, and we also buy, sell, and do services. So I've got a lot of experience in it and I wanted to share some of it uh, with the very beginning stages of like, you decide you want a VW bus, where do I look? Where do I start? How much should I expect to pay? Um, who's gonna fix it for me? Can I fix it myself? Where do I get the parts? Is it even a good idea? Am I paying too much? Am I gonna lose money? Are the value of these buses going to go down in a couple of years and I should wait till I buy one? That's gonna, that's not going to happen, right? Every single year these buses keep going up in value. It's, it's almost ridiculous to me, someone that has been into them for about 20 years now, to see the value of them go up annually. Um, and what's more crazy is that during the pandemic, when I thought business is going to be either slow or die who's going to want to spend 10 20 grand on a vw bus and i was wrong business was busier than ever and the prices of these buses went up so much in the past three years um it's an interesting thing so having a bus you're not going to lose money um unless you do something really ridiculous like you know you're not wise with what you're putting into it. Uh, you're not gonna lose money. Uh, the value is only gonna go up over time, so if you keep it long enough, whatever you have into it, you'll get it back um, if you decided to sell it. That's number one, you wouldn't lose money. Now, where to look, where to start looking if you want a bus, that kind of depends on where you live in America. I'm fortunate enough to live in Southern California so I see buses all the time. I'm about 20 minutes from the beach, uh, PCH, uh, Pacific Coast Highway, um, like uh, Huntington Beach area, Costa Mesa, Laguna, like all that kind of strip area is what I'm closest to. And every time I go out there with a bus, I'm always gonna see a bus, guaranteed. If I don't see one, it's almost like shocking and I feel a little sad. I'm like, what's going on today? It's like a gloomy day or people just didn't wanna get out and cruise. So where I'm at in, in Southern California, they seem to be all over the place. Um, but at the same time, in Southern California, bus prices tend to be a bit higher than other areas in the United States, like Middle America. Uh, Middle America is a lot better uh, as far as like pricing goes. Although you have to consider the rust issues, they could be more severe in those areas. So it's almost like you have to have a little more experience of what to look for before you go buy it. Um, and I do notice that um, way East Coast, Florida is super popular for buses. Um, New York City areas, those areas seem to be really expensive, uh, probably more than California. And I don't mean expensive in a bad way. I don't even think expensive is the right word for it. Um, the, the value is just more over there because for one, it's harder to even get a bus out there in the first place. Um, the work that people have to do in those areas to get that bus to look that nice costs more to do. And so because it costs more, um, the value is just gonna be a little more out there. You're gonna pay a little more. Um, so depending on where you are in the United States, I'd say if I was in like Kansas and I wanted a VW bus, the first thing I might start to do is look on Facebook Marketplace I would say Craigslist, but um, if I'm searching Craigslist in like say Kansas, chances are I'm not gonna find a VW bus for sale. Um, I look everywhere, I'm from California and I look everywhere on Craigslist um, and I do find them, but it's really rare. A lot of times I'm finding buses, they're in like um, Arizona, uh, Oregon, Colorado, um, a lot up north in Northern California. Um, 
middle America, like for example, I mean, uh, if you look Facebook Marketplace, they'll just be like a whole different area and category where you can search all the different parts of the United States. Um, and then you could be, you could find one that way. Um, and what to look for when you do find one is um, I would recommend, I would recommend one that at least runs and it doesn't even have to run like really that well like it doesn't have to be like oh you can go like road trip cross country running with it I um, mean it doesn't even need to be like you could go like and grab groceries a few miles away like that's a great bonus but just the bare minimum of like it at least runs is like the guys like I can start it up I move it around my driveway um, and that's about it it still needs work obviously but just the fact that it runs a little bit it's already you're already ahead of the game by so much you might you might save some money that way if if it at least runs um and i say that because from my experience buying a bus that doesn't run at all um there's a really good chance that it doesn't run at all and not only that it hasn't been running in several years like five plus years a lot of the buses that we bought that didn't run at all anymore we're sitting for at least 10 years and because of that it's like a complete overhaul you're gonna spend so much money on brakes on the motor on electrical on tires on the steering wheel suspension uh, on shocks I mean there's just so many things that wear out uh, from something sitting that long you're gonna replace the gas tank so you're gonna have to go through a lot of different things that you may not have to go through if you bought a bus that was at least running. Like the guys, like I take it to the liquor store every now and then, it still needs a ton of work. It, it barely slows down. Sometimes when I start it, it takes forever to start. Um, I've gotta jump it with battery cables, whatever it is. But if it at least runs, if that seller can at least say, it'll start enough to get it on the trailer, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good bonus like you're a little bit ahead of the game so keep that in mind if you're looking for a bus try to buy one that's at least running a tiny bit a little bit um, if it's not there's gonna just be a lot more involved in getting it running so let's say you found a bus it's um, kind of running a little bit running enough to say get on a trailer to get it shipped over to wherever you live and the reason why I say shipped over because it's a rare bus, chances of one being near you that you could go get yourself is probably pretty rare. You're probably gonna have to have it shipped. So once you kind of reach that point of finding a bus, it kind of runs, um, your next thing is gonna wanna be looking at the body of it. Um, severe rust is, um, is out there. It's hard to explain what to look for other than <laughs> I put some uh, little photos up in this video right here and kind of show you the common areas, which I think is probably a good idea. Um, common rust areas on buses are gonna be the front uh, driver and passenger floor that tends to accumulate a lot of water and over time it's gonna rust out. Um, on the outside of that, just underneath the door, um, it's like a stepping area. Um, it's known as the dog legs and those tend to rot out a lot. It's super common for them to rot So you want to look in that area too, and I'll see what I can do about putting photos up I think that's a good idea to do and uh, that's another area um, on the very front of the bus on the bottom underneath the bumpers can rot out It's a common area underneath the windshield of course um, The battery tray on these buses are almost always rotted out um, I wouldn't uh, be too concerned about that um, if it's not rotted out in the battery tray area and it doesn't look like that's ever been replaced uh, there's a good chance that's like a clue or a tip or whatever there's a good chance that that bus may not be that rusty especially if the outside doesn't look bad um, you might you might find yourself with a pretty solid bus because battery tray is usually always gonna rust up so um, uh, then you've got all the lower parts of the bus on the very bottom like the un, the, uh, the lower six inches has different areas that will rust out and underneath the wheel wells of the front driver's seats um, Underneath the wheel well, you'll see rust uh, as well as the back that tends to get rust there as well 
So there's a lot of areas. Um, uh, most of the areas are common. Um, these buses like to rust in the same areas. You will find random areas of rust that don't quite make sense. Maybe the bus was parked by a tree for a long time and that tree branch rotted out the top somewhere. But for the most part, um, it's all gonna be real common areas that you're gonna find. And I'll, I'll put some of that up. Um, for me, I'm not really too, it's just my personal opinion, but I'm not too like afraid of rust. Um, because these buses rust in so many areas that are so common, a lot of uh, retail shops make these replacement parts and you can buy them. Um, there'll be metal replacement pieces for it. So they are. it is fixable. Um, I would say that you probably don't wanna get a bus that the frames are rusted out. That's pretty tough to do. Um, that's kind of a sign of that bus has been in a lot of uh, rough weather. Um, it's taken a lot of beating over the years to, for it to rust the frame. Um, and when I say rust, I don't mean like surface rust where you see rust on a frame on the outside. I mean rust on the frame where it's a little crispy. Um, that is something that you probably don't want to get into. Although they do make replacement panels for those as well. So it kind of depends on how bad you want it or if it's a really rare bus, um, if it's something that's worth your time, or if you happen to be a welder, then it wouldn't even really matter. You could go, go full blast on it because you've got the skill to do it. Um, so now we've uh, looked at the rust. We've uh, found out that a you found a bus that maybe is kind of running. Um, the rust maybe seems okay. The third thing would be, um, how do I get it shipped to me? And what do I do? What should I look for? Should I be worried? Is this guy a scammer? How much is it gonna cost to get to me? How long is it gonna take? Who do I reach out to to have them pick up the bus in the first place? What do I tell them about the bus? Um, how do I send the seller funds to pay for it? Should I trust them? How do I do it? I've done this hundreds of times and I'm gonna share with you what we do to try to protect ourselves uh, from scams because we did get scammed once. Um, it's just a thing that can happen. Um, you learn from it and you figure out other ways to uh, trust people, other ways to tr uh, protect yourself before sending somebody that you've never met uh, money and in exchange for a bus that you have never seen in person So I will share that with you next. So here's an example of a bus. We purchased sight unseen um, This bus was in uh, I think it was Washington, but it originated from uh, Idaho so uh, What I did was when I saw the ad online uh, I reached out to the buyer um, If there's a phone number, that's always great Sometimes when it's email only, it's a little sketchy. Although I can recall buying a few buses with just email conversation, but that email conversation eventually led to a phone number. I don't think I've ever bought a bus sight unseen uh, strictly through email. Um, I like to at least hear the person's voice. It makes me feel better. I get a feel for them. Excuse me, they get a feel for me. Um, <clears throat> after a while, you can kind of uh, start to get a little more comfortable with the person, seeing if they really do own the bus, if it's not a scam. Um, usually VW bus owners, they'll know a little bit about the bus. You can kind of tell by a conversation sometimes that, okay, sounds like this person really does own it, has enjoyed it or not enjoyed it, um, or sounds like it really is sitting in their yard. So that's like number one is uh, I try to get a phone conversation going Number two is um, I will ask for um, a photo of the title. I'll ask for a photo of the VIN. Um, once we've kind of like even made a deal and I, the guy or gal knows that I'm not wasting their time, I will even uh, ask them like things, um, do you mind sending me a photo ID? Um, it kind of adds a little extra safety even though it isn't still 100%, but I like to do that. Another thing that I will do is uh, definitely these days, because our phones are capable of it for the most part, is I'll try to do a FaceTime with them. Um, for me, a FaceTime phone call where I can actually see the bus gets, um, kind of completely gets rid of my worries in a way, because I'm physically looking at the bus and the person's with the bus. Um, and then prior to that FaceTime, um, the VIN number and the conversations of the title 
um, have already been kind of discussed. So when I talk to them FaceTime, it kind of all rolls in together and makes sense. So um, I can look at the bus and see that it's actually there. They actually do own it. Um, if that is not a possibility uh, from the seller or even you, you don't have that capability on your phone. Um, the other thing I will do is I'll ask for random photos of the bus. Random, like, um, you know, oh, does the back have seatbelts? Can you send me a photo? I mean, that doesn't make sense, but, or uh, can you send me um, underneath the wheel wells? I want to see if there's rust there. Um, so that way, the reason I do that is to try to cancel out people that are scamming and they just have copy and pasted somebody else's bus that was for sale. So they may not have that photo available. So that kind of shows me like if they don't have that photo available, it might, makes me think, well, maybe they don't even have the bus. Um, so you start to get feelings about the person, whether or not it's good or bad, and you kind of should go with your gut. Um, the one time that I got scammed, um, it was for $300 a, a deposit because I liked the bus. I was going to go pick it up the following uh, day, but it seemed like it was a really good price. And the, the guy on the phone was telling me that there's more people interested. Um, he's not going to hold it without a deposit or I can just come down and look at it if it's still available. Um, and it seemed a little off. Uh, looking back, I totally realized like, oh man, I got too excited about something that was a little too good to be true. And it was, I sent a deposit, uh, not PayPal. He said he didn't do any PayPal thing. He only wanted a wire transfer. Uh, wire transfers, once they get sent out, that's kind of it. There's really no nothing else you can do about it. And for me, $300, um, I didn't really know what to do about it. I didn't want to be on the phone for hours through banks trying to figure out what happened, who it was, uh, police report. I mean, 300 bucks. I just took it as, dude, that's a $300 lesson that you learned. And I just moved on. Um, it did cost me uh, a trailer that I had to rent. I did drive out about four hours to go get this bus that did not exist. Um, once I was already out there, um, things just work out great because I checked <laughs> I checked Craigslist in that area for what might be available as far as the VW bus went, and I found a great bus out there uh, that I ended up buying. I stuck around about three more hours to make it fit with that guy's schedule, the other seller. I went and looked at it, and I bought it because I had a trailer. I paid uh, more than I wanted. I didn't really have any room to negotiate. Um, I explained to the guy what happened. He knew I was way out there and, um, I'm either going to buy the bus or I'm just going to go home and call the whole thing a loss. So I, I bought it. Um, it was a beautiful bus. Uh, long story short, we sold it, we fixed it. Uh, it was great, but, uh, I always learned from that and moving forward, I asked for again, a photo of the title, a photo of the VIN uh, in a couple of different areas on the bus. Uh, once I've kind of negotiated like a price, I'm feeling comfortable with the person. I've talked to them on the phone. I, I say something simple like, hey, you know, before I send the money, do you mind uh, sending me a photo of your ID? Um, and that's, that's what I do uh, if they don't have like FaceTime and I can't just call them and physically see the bus behind them, um, then I'll do that. But the best case scenario is if you're buying sight unseen is if you can get the person to do a FaceTime chat with you with the bus so you can look at it. It really does cancel everything out because they can show you the bus, they can show you the title, um, everything like that. Um, last but not least, I guess if you don't want to send a wire transfer, you could probably send a check and just tell them when the check clears, let me know and I'll schedule transport and pickup. Uh, a check might be a little helpful too because when that person goes in to cash it, they do need to have some form of ID. Um, there would be some kind of record if you'd like never received the bus. Um, still a hassle, of course, but not as much as if you sent a wire transfer. Um, at that point, it may be too difficult to get your money back if it turns out to be uh, untrue. So it is an unfortunate topic, but I wanted to talk about it because I am talking about wanting to buy a bus, the steps, what to look for um, and all that. And so it's an important thing to talk about because we've purchased so many sight unseen. I wanted to share with you guys. And uh, this one was sight unseen. I knew exactly how it looked when I bought it. I uh, did a FaceTime with this guy as well. We chatted a bunch. Um, he sent me photos. I've talked to him. Uh, got a good feeling. He's a regular person. No one trying to scam anybody. 
Um, I think I mailed a check out when the check cleared, uh, we scheduled transport and pickup. So uh, how about the next thing I talk about is scheduling transport and pickup. Once you've made a deal with somebody, you've sent them the money, the money has cleared and it's time to get that bus picked up and sent to you. So let's do that video next. So scheduling transport and pickup. You're ready to pick up your bus. Um, what I do and who I use is uh, I use a, a transport shipping broker. Um, it's a transport shipping broker uh, company, I guess you could say. Um, and the reason why I do that is because in the past I have put out um, like a U-ship uh, online, um, which is good, but what ends up happening is when you put in the information of where the driver is and you and your phone number and that you're looking for a driver to pick this up, um, your phone will literally blow up with phone calls. Um, I've got like 30 calls in one day of just different, uh, different drivers saying, hey, I can pick that up. Um, they'll give you a price um, and it's up to you to accept or not accept um, and they'll try to they'll try to like um, negotiate with you so it's a little stressful you know it's like hey I, I'll do it for uh, 900 bucks and then um, and if you say no they're like oh what about seven or what about next week I can do it for 700 and it's just a lot of that going on from like several different drivers and um, in the past it was okay to do that for, I didn't mind it as much but now that we're a lot busier, um, I can't afford to just spend, you know, all day long talking to different drivers and stuff. And not only that, it just gets a little overwhelming. So uh, we use a transport broker for that. And he is basically the guy that will set everything up. So what I do is I reach out to him. I send him an email. Hey, how's it going? I've got this bus in, um, I don't know, let's just say Ohio, right? It's a non-running bus. I give him the year, I give him the address, I give him the location it's gonna get dropped off at, and then he'll put out there um, a price of what the going rate is gonna be for that. So let's just say, for example, it's like uh, from Ohio to California is $1,100, right? He'll be like, hey, Adam, the uh, price is 1100 uh, bucks. Do you wanna accept that rate? And then I'd say, okay, sure, 1100 works. Um, he'll put it on a board and then several drivers will see that this non-running bus from Ohio is gonna go to California. And if it fits their route, they'll go ahead and accept it. They'll call the broker and say, hey, I can pick that up. Um, I notice you have it for 1100. It's a non-running bus. Do you think that you could do 1200 instead? Um, and then the broker would call me and say, hey Adam, I have a driver, but he wants 1200. Do you wanna do it? Um, and then that's up to me to say yes or no, or to wait it out and see if there's another driver that will eventually pick that bus up. Um, oftentimes when the bus is not running, it could take a little longer to get that bus picked up because it does take more work for the driver to get it loaded. He has to have a winch um, and he has to be able to pull it up and uh, transport it. It takes him longer. So it could take longer. So if someone's calling and is like, hey, I'll do it, but I want you know 100 bucks more, uh, I'll always say, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it um, to get it picked up. So once that is agreed upon, um, then the broker will go ahead and book that transport. He'll charge me $100, that's separate from the driver uh, for his work, the broker's work, he'll charge me 100, so I'll pay him. Then he'll email me all the information of the driver with his name, the company, and then um, they'll that driver will reach out to me like i'm gonna be picking this bus up uh like tuesday it'll take me a week to get it to you um, they will also reach out to the seller and communicate with them on what day works best for you uh, so that i could pick this bus up and um once the driver picks it up uh he'll start heading to once the driver picks it up he'll start heading down to you or where you are at he'll he'll contact you ahead of time um, you can also reach out to him because you'll have his number and um, basically just saying, hey, I'm going to be there Thursday at 10 from 10 to noon. Uh, OK, cool. That works. Um, and then when he gets there, most of these drivers, like 90 percent, you're going to have to pay them cash or like a Zelle or uh, some type of cash app. Um, they don't accept any checks when you drop it off. They usually want cash. So that say $1,200, if we negotiate it, no, it's uh, uh, yeah, $1,200 or $1,100, whatever the price is, um, you'll pay that to the driver when he arrives with your bus. And um, 
And that's kind of really how it goes with transport. Uh, a little, a couple of tips for transport. You, you're gonna wanna ask the seller uh, where they live, if they live on a windy road, um, if they live in an area that is difficult for a big rig truck to get to, you're gonna wanna mention that to the driver and the broker so that they can arrange for either another way to pick it up or send a smaller uh, transport there to pick it up. In the past, we have had um, buses in like windy road areas and the driver just couldn't get there. So he got there, I got a phone call, hey, there's no way this truck's gonna be able to make it up there. And then they have to either reschedule a new driver or in that case in particular that I'm talking about, I called a local tow truck company to drive up to the top, uh, pick it up and bring it down to the driver. Um, it cost me an additional like 85 bucks to do that. But it's good to just know ahead of time if the area that they're at is accessible because a lot of these drivers are in big rig um, car haulers. So that's a, that's a point to mention on uh, when you're transporting buses to mention that too so that it's all clear and definitely let them know if the bus is running or not because that could be a huge thing too. They get there and the bus isn't running and they may not have a, a tow hauler to get it. So, and that's how you book a if transport. You enjoyed the video of um, the information I provided on looking for a bus, uh, buying it, transporting it. If there's something that I forgot, which I probably did, go ahead and leave it in the comments, ask questions. If there's another video you think that I should make, uh, let me know. I got a comment uh, of a few. One of them was um, how to start a bus that's been sitting a long time. There's a lot of steps you got to take before you crank that thing over. Um, that would be a good one. Um, so maybe I can do that video next. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, subscribe and uh, like, of course, and uh, let me know what you think. If you're looking for a VW bus, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel. All I do are buses. We buy them, we sell them, we restore them. We do services on them, only buses, 1968 to 1979. Take care, guys. Peace.